So let's see, maybe it, maybe it went higher again. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Thank you, someone. We almost got to a passing average. Okay, let's just talk through how these all work together. Oh, that's on the other screen. I just got comfortable. All right, so we did the notes, we did some practice, but we need to do some more. So if we have pH, we have pOH, we have H plus concentration, and we have OH minus concentration. On the exam, oh, and we have acid, base, or neutral. On the exam, all of the questions will be easy, which means they'll all be ones or whole numbers, which means they don't require a calculator. So we can, if you remember, pH plus pOH equals 14. So we can use that relationship to find one or the other given one or the other. Okay, then maybe you remember pH and H plus have a relationship and pOH and OH have a relationship. All right, the pH is equal to the negative log of H plus. Now we could use a calculator or we said pH is equal to the negative exponent of the H plus. Now the negative is a double negative which makes pH a positive. So what that meant is that if H plus concentration was equal to one times 10 to the negative three, then the pH would be equal to the negative of negative three, which would just be a three. So we said these two numbers will always relate to each other. Fair enough with that. Okay, then if we just keep going now, if we know pH is three, we can look at this top relationship and say, well, then pOH must be what? All right, it must be equal to 11. All right, then we could say this exact same thing for pOH right here. pOH is equal to the negative exponent of the OH minus. So now I could know from pOH being 11, I could know the concentration of OH minus is equal to one times 10 to the negative 11, because these numbers match. It's just the negative of the negative, which makes it a positive. All right, try this. I'll give you one single number and see if you can figure out the rest. The pOH is equal to eight. What I would like to know is the pH, the H plus, and the OH minus concentrations, just based on that one single value. Ready, set, go. with the low scores and then I walk in and Miller's slide is on premenstrual syndrome. So I figured I could be doing worse. At least I don't have to quiz on that. Okay, how are we doing? We got them all? All right, so nice and loud and proud. If this is an eight, what's our pH? <laughs> That's right, it's a six but the emotion there was a little lacking. That would mean the H plus is equal to one times 10 to the negative six. Jared, are you lost? Usually yeah. you're totally hyped on this. I don't know what's happening. My brain hurts. Oh. This is not a way to start off the week. I wanna go back to bed. 
So do I. All right, well, Spencer wasn't even here and he's figured it out, right? Okay. What do we think this is, everybody? One times 10 to the negative eight. Notice the pH and the H plus concentration, the number's always the same. It's just this one's a negative. Notice the POH and the exponent of OH are always the same. Just it's a negative, so it makes it a positive. All right, well, let's try this again. Jared, you gonna be all right? Let's get your brain working again. You know, why do I do all that? Just to, here, we'll just get rid of all of this. You what? Oh, crab. Okay, definitely thought you said crap. I'm like, that's uh that sounds like a problem if you're 17 and taking your first crap, but crab duh sounds a lot better. Okay, here we go. Uh which one of these numbers do you want me to start with? The pH. All right, I'm gonna say the pH is a two. Ready, set. Go and do. You're done? I thought you were lost. I am. So you just left it blank? No. I didn't really mean it. Okay. Should I change my screen background to you? Sure. At the dance. <laughs> My fourth son. I do now. Maybe you should just Photoshop me in. Okay, if I get time. Okay, raise your hands if you're done. Keep your hands down if you're not trying at all. <laughs> okay, that's better. All right, if this is a two, what's P O H? A 12. If this is a two, what's the concentration of H plus? All right, if this is a 12, what's this? Can we do better on our quiz if we gave it to you again tomorrow? Good. These exponents, by the way, they always add to negative 14. So if you don't even feel like doing POH, you don't really have to, but that's they're related to each other. Okay, the test is when, remind yourselves? Wednesday. Friday, no one's getting, well, you're invited for the eight, 10, 15 minutes we have class, whatever it is. You're all welcome to attend. It's our last time together, but you're not really required by me. No, Friday, Friday, Friday's a half day. Um, okay, now another piece of the test, if you were to look on your front cover and have all these things, and then it's like household of pH or something, whoops. Oh, that was right. What does it say on the front? Household. Okay, acidic mason properties of household products. That's a lab that we won't take super long, but we'll do it. Open up to page four, maybe. It's just a big table. Right there. What page is that? Page five. There are multiple big pages. Page eight, if you want, you can go ahead and give that the old X or -oo. We're not going to do page eight or nine. But yes, we will do page five. We're going to do it right now. It's super fun. This makes you want to go. All right, the household products lab. Let me just go right here. Oh, you know what? I don't think I ever did it. Question? Page four, bottom. Uh, all right, we can do that right now. Page four. Acid plus base, and then there's two blanks, right? Is that on page four? All right, it goes to salt and water.
And then you just write the formulas. Oh, hello. We have one sophomore right here, right? Are you, any other sophomores? I'm the sophomore. Don't believe him. Don't believe him. He's lying. Come on. I want to write to myself. You can, yeah. you can do that right now. Hey, Jared. All right. This is the blanks on page four. Then underneath it says something like only those compounds which can form ions in solutions can be considered acid or bases. Was there any other blank there? All right. The adjective strong and weak have the same application they did to electrolytes. Moving down a strong acid is one that, complete, that completely ionizes to form ions in solution or something like that. Huh? Got them all right here. And then was this the blank, right? And then in, no, when weak, acids dissolve in water, only a small fraction of them ionize. All right, this, this part's really not that critical. You should know though, that when an acid and base react, they make salt and water. That's the two products. Okay, now, <clears throat> excuse me, but that sounded great on the video. Okay, I never did the lab book. So we'll just kind of talk through this household products lab. It's pretty simple. We've done one just like this. So your job is to be able to figure out how the things in your house would be used and whether they're acids or bases, generally speaking. So. Back right where Savannah is sitting, you'll see a bunch of household products. You just come grab a tray. There might be one at your station. And just don't take the like lemonade pipette to your station. Just fill up three wells of it and then get out of the way. So make sure you keep track of what you're doing. That's a really dumb way to fill it up. Just go down, not across. Um, you'll just get a few samples and then record them at the top of your table. So there's no specific order, but like, oh, thanks for being open and ready, young lady. Oh, oh, okay, sorry. All right, so like number one, if you felt like it, and lemonade was the first thing you tested, you just say lemonade. Next, it says litmus paper color change. All right, look up here or over here. Today you have three different pieces of paper. You have the red litmus paper that might turn blue, which is pink and goes purple. You have the blue that might go red, which is purple and might go pink. And then you have a third one today, which is this orange one. The orange one is called pH paper, and it's one of the rows, probably the third one down. All right, second one down. So litmus paper color change. That one you put like red to blue or blue to red, or like R dash B, B dash R. You with me? The second row down, you'll take this one. So the second row down, it's orange. And what you do is you put it into a sample. So we'll put it in right here. So it was orange and you don't have to put orange because it's always orange no matter what. So it says color change, you would write blue, is that blue? All right, so you would just write blue. Then the row under it where it says pH number or whatever, then you compare it to this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven of you are paying zero attention. That's appreciated. All right, you compare it to this and you'd say, all right, that's probably an 11 or a 12. Okay, so so far you'd have how one of those changes, the color it goes, and the number associated with it. So you'll need one of these tubes. 
Um, if it looks like this, you don't need that tube. You need the one with the scale on it. Okay. Then the bottom rows are just your liquid indicator test. We have universal. I'm not going to put red cabbage juice out, so you can just ignore that row. And bromothymol blue. So really, you just need two samples, not three of each one. So you drip some red, some universal, and just tell me what color it changes. Then you test bromothymol blue, tell me the color it changes. And then formulate your idea on whether the thing you're testing is an acid or base, based on the properties. So why don't you do me a favor? In the row that says red cabbage juice or under, if you crossed it out, for each one at the bottom or in there, just write whether it's an acid or a base once you've got data. If you don't remember which it is, look on page four. Please don't talk. If you don't remember whether it's an acid or base, look which data side it matches the most. Um, and then really you're ready to go. You can dump everything in the sink. Today we're safety glasses. Um, well, they're all household products. Will you be careful? Okay, I won't make you wear safety glasses or aprons, but they are household things. There is bleach, so just be careful so you don't bleach your clothes or anything like that. When you're done, rinse it out. The papers do the same thing where you have a piece of paper, put them all on it and throw it away at the end. Shouldn't take too long. We're trying to figure out the general use of acids and bases in our homes. Okay, fire away, my friends. The indicators are here in the fume hood. The things you test are right there. The pipettes at your station sort of apply to this lab, sort of don't. 